In this video, we're going to look at the simplest way to remove a background from a still image in Fusion. We're going to go from something like this, this lovely lady giving us this nice smile, to the background removed and replaced with whatever we want, and a nice little white stroke around it. Really simple technique in Fusion. Of course, Fusion is not just for still images. You can also do this with a moving image, but that's for another video. My name is Casey. I help content creators make amazing things in Fusion. I also have a free video course on Fusion, the Fusion Survival Guide. It's available in the description down below. Let's get into it. So let's just restart here in the edit page in the media pool. I'm gonna right click and say new Fusion composition and hit create. And I can double click on that composition to open it up in the Fusion page. And what I like to do, if I'm gonna be kind of making something from scratch in Fusion, is take a background and drag this down and connect this to my media out like this. And that by default will give us a black background that is set to our timeline settings, which for me is 1920 by 1080. So we have a nice little kind of canvas to work on here. And I'll just make this a little more prettier color. Let's just go to maybe four corner here where it says type under our background. And we'll just make something nice to kind of look at here. Sure. And now let's grab our image. I'll go up to my media pool and I've already imported the image of our girl here. I'll hit one on the keyboard to bring this up in the left viewer. And this process works with absolutely any kind of image. The one thing that we're gonna make sure to do is to take the image and merge it over our background first. So I'll take the output of our image and drag it over the output, the little white square of our background to make a merge node, making sure that our image is in the green input, that's the foreground of the merge node, and the background is in the yellow background input. Okay, so that will kind of crop this in a little bit, and we can adjust that by adding a transform node between our media in and our merge. So I can grab this transform node right here and just drag it in between like this. And then I can adjust the size and everything to be just how I want. So let's say we're making kind of a thumbnail for like a YouTube video or whatever. So we'll just kind of position this roughly where we want to be. We can always change this later, but it's nice to get it pretty close. Then what we're gonna do is mask this out so that we're only keeping the main lady here and we're getting rid of the background. There are a lot of ways to do that. The way that I like to do that is to mask it on the merge. And just as a review, these four little icons here are our masks. And if we grab a mask and apply it to this merge, the merge is only going to do its job inside of the mask, okay? Anytime that we mask something, we're telling whatever node we're masking to only do whatever that node does inside of this mask. So this merge is only going to make this image show up inside of the mask, but we don't want a circle mask, we want a custom mask here, which we can use this polygon mask for. So I'll take the polygon mask and drag that down and I'll connect it to our merge, but this makes the image disappear and I can't see what I'm doing. So with the polygon mask selected, I'll go up here to the upper right and just turn off this little switch. And now I can draw the polygon mask without actually applying it yet. So now it's just a matter of zooming in and clicking and dragging around to trace out my subject. And what I like to do is hold control and roll in with my scroll wheel so that I'm pretty zoomed in. When you're making a mask, you can click once to add a sharp corner and you can click and drag to add a corner with these handles. And I can click and drag with my middle button, that's my scroll wheel on my mouse, to kind of move this, pan this around like this. And generally when I'm drawing a mask, I don't wanna draw tons of little points like this because it's just harder to edit later. You wanna make the least amount of points possible. And so if you can click and drag the handles, that can make a nice mask, it's a lot less work. And here, I'm not worrying about the flyaway hairs, the kind of cutout style that we're going for here means that we don't really have to worry about all these little flyaways. If we want to get crazy and get all of these little hairs and stuff, that is a different tutorial. But this is just a nice simple way to make good kind of thumbnail graphic, something that's maybe a little stylized. I'm just drawing kind of the big sharp shape around her hair, not getting too detailed, not worrying about a lot of these kind of interior pieces. We're just gonna kind of get the outline. And again, I'm just clicking and dragging where I need to. I'm not putting in more points than I need to. There we go. I'm taking this way off the bottom here so that we have a little bit of room. Then I'm gonna go all the way down to where we started. And then I'm gonna close the mask here by clicking where it has that circle, just like that. So now I have a closed mask and it's all around our subject here. And then we can go up and turn the switch back on and that will cut her out. And that looks pretty nice. If you wanted to, you could go in and kind of trace this out. Depends on what you're masking. I feel like it looks fine like this for this kind of style. Depends on how picky you wanna be. If you did want to cut this out, the way that you would do that would be you'd bring your polygon mask down like this and you'd add another mask after it like that. And then you draw whatever you wanna cut out. So maybe we'll just kind of make this little shape here. 
And with this second mask selected, I can go up here to where it says paint mode, where it says merge, and let's select subtract. And that will subtract this mask from the other one. And so now we have kind of a hole there. I feel like it's more distracting to have the hole there, so I'm not that worried about it, but that's how you could do that. So you could go in and combine a whole bunch of different masks and make a really intricate outline if you wanted to, that's how you would do it. And you can just stack a bunch of these masks and have that paint mode be subtract. But for now, I'll just leave this one mask. Okay, so we have her cut out of the background. We have a really, really sharp edge here. And now let's add a stroke. There are a few different ways that you could add a stroke, but what I like to do is use kind of a version of this mask with an actual stroke on it. So any mask, if we select it, and we go over to the inspector, there are a bunch of different options. One of them is this solid checkbox. If I uncheck this solid checkbox, our image disappears. But if I push up border width, it actually draws a stroke along the mask, which is really convenient for what we're gonna do next, although not super great for the actual mask of the girl here. So I'll just undo both of those things and we'll leave this mask how it is. But what we can do is do something like take another background, just grab another background here, and again, merge it over our background. Let's name this and we'll call this stroke color. I just hit F2 to rename that. And let's make this white. And we can use this same mask to control multiple different things. So I could take the output of this mask and put this into merge two, and that will mask our white as well. If I disable our merge here, we can see we have this same shape being cut out of our white background, which is fine, except for we can't see it behind our girl here. So because we're using the same mask, that's not gonna work. We'll have to duplicate the mask somehow. So I can take this polygon mask, I'll copy, control C, and then double click off of it and control V to paste. And I can take the output of this and put it into the input of our merge. And then I can take this second mask here and I can push up something like the border width and that will make a stroke around our subject here. And that totally works. One thing that I might do that's similar to this would be to make an instance of the path because if I wanted to go in here and adjust this a little bit, like, oh, I actually want this to be a little different. If I move this around, it's not going to change the stroke. It's only going to change the middle. But if I use a instance by just hitting control C and then clicking off of here and hitting control shift V, there's a little green line connecting these. Then I can connect this instanced polygon and I can de-instance any part of it. Like for instance, this border width, I can right click and say de-instance. And then I can push up this border width like this and now we have kind of a modified version of this polygon mask that's still connected with a bigger border width. And so if I change either the polygon mask or the instance polygon mask, they're both going to reflect that change. The only difference is that this polygon mask is going to have a bigger border and it's going to be set behind our subject. So if I want to go in and adjust something really quick, I can just grab either of these masks and it's a really flexible way to do that. Get it flexible because I just flexed this. Okay. So yeah, maybe we'll push that border width up a little more. And there we have that nice little kind of cutout style graphic. Isn't that neat? And then maybe I could do something even crazier. Like maybe I'll take another background here and we'll connect this to the background of everything. And we'll just turn this alpha down here so that all we have is this graphic of our main subject lady over nothing. Then we can merge all of this over our colorful background like this. And because all of this is kind of coming into its own merge, it's almost like it's its own little group. So we could do something like, you know, grab a transform node. And since both the picture and the stroke and everything is running through the same transform, I can move those together like they're one object. So we could do something like keyframe this and have this kind of pop in here like that, shablam, and get some really cool results. You know what I'm saying? Or we can just export this as a still and use it as a thumbnail. You know what I'm saying? Pretty cool. But that's pretty much how it's done. You have your picture, kind of size it how you want over your background, trace it with a polygon mask, make a white background behind it, and trace that with a polygon mask with a little bit bigger stroke behind it. And boom, you have a really cool cutout effect. Super easy in Fusion. Hey, if you want to learn a little bit more about Fusion, if you're just diving in, I would definitely recommend the Fusion Survival Guide. It's available right now. It's a free video course where I go through kind of the the basic tips, the, the need to know stuff for working in Fusion. It's very important. I don't know why I say it in this voice, but I do. <laughs> Hey, what would you like to learn about in Fusion? Why don't you let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video about it, huh? Maybe I will, unless you're afraid. Are you afraid? <laughs> Everybody else is doing it, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna be, everybody's gonna think you're pretty brave for doing that, for commenting. It's a thing, saw it happen.